Good evening, good evening all, and welcome to uh, our weekly travel training. My name is Marcia Lashley, and this week we are going to discuss um, branding yourself as an ITA agent, set, setting your goals, finding new clients, and ways to find new clients, and um, your travel business, customer relationship, travel insurance, and upcoming industry events. So we may or may not get through all of it. I'm going to try to push through <clears throat> all of it. I'm a fast talker, so I'm going to try to get through all of it within an hour. But um, if you guys have to disconnect because you're up at your hour, then they'll be – these recordings are all posted the following day on YouTube at my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash OTM Travel Services, and you can um, subscribe and you'll be able to have access to them, okay? So, I, I swear I tell you guys, I thought I put this um, timer on mute. One second here, let's see. Let's see what's going on. One moment. I'm not sure why um, I'm hearing the chime, so I wanted to fix that before I go any further in the training. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, I'm definitely hearing the chimes. I'm in a different room. I think my um, I think my my uh, Wi-Fi is moving a little slow because I'm in a totally different room away, <clears throat> excuse me, away from the modem. So trials are trying, but we're not going to let them today. No, we're not. Okay, I can't find um, the chimes. I don't know where they are, so let's continue. So. As I was saying, you can go register, you can subscribe to OTM Travel Services on YouTube and you'll be able to view these webinars, okay, and take notes all you want. So, like I said, we're talking about branding yourself. And as, as independent travel agents, also, guys, I have a, <clears throat> under the weather, so my throat is a little scratchy. Um, as independent travel agents, guys, we have to, we must brand ourselves. Um, and there's so many different tools out there for us, and we're blessed to be with IntelliTravel where we don't have to go and spend money on marketing materials. It's just a matter of how we're using and if we're using those marketing materials to brand ourselves, and that's another thing I love about IntelliTravel as well, we are allowed to brand ourselves. So as uh, independent travel agents, people buy into us. Right? And how we, like when we go on a, a, a fam trip and we experience the properties and we're able to describe them verbatim to the client and they're like so blown away because you just experienced everything that you've experienced, the butler service and everything that you've experienced, you shared with them and they just bought it. They just bought into you and what you shared with them, your experiences or your client's experience. They didn't buy into IntelliTravel. They have no idea who IntelliTravel is. You don't even mention IntelliTravel when you first initially introduce yourself to your clients. So it's all about branding yourself as a travel agent and <clears throat> using the tools that we have. And we do have tools. Um, here's one of the tools that I'm going to talk about tonight briefly, uh, Ensemble Target and Direct Mail uh, Marketing. Guys, this stuff is phenomenal. Let me show you. Even today, I got, um, I got this today, which is pretty much, um, and it has IntelliTravel, and it has an address to the sender, and when you open it up, you have all of these different, the Caribbean, Hawaii, Panama Canal. I mean, your clients would want to receive these. You, you see what I'm saying? Your clients will really want to receive these. <clears throat> Intelli um, ensemble, this, e this Ensemble Target Direct Mail Marketing, it sends your clients brochures like these and all of these. These vacation therapies and here's another one, Oceana Cruises, Hall in America, Crystal Cruises. I mean, these are all the, what your clients will receive when, they, when you sign them up, and a lot of agents are not utilizing this tool that we have to brand ourselves. Now, to look like the business professional that we are, 
We have the tools. We have the access. It's up to us as individual, as indep independent agents to utilize them, okay, and use them to our ability so that we can really build our travel business, right? <clears throat> so how are you marketing your travel business? Are you utilizing every available, everything available to you? Be sure to use the free marketing program. This is free, guys, worth thousands of dollars designed to be highly effective in helping you obtain new business or incentivizing your clients, right, your current clients that you have. Ensemble also has an exciting year of marketing plans for IntelliTravel agents. The customized plan is designed to keep your agency top of mind through our high-quality, easy-targeted approach to marketing so you can focus on what you do best, creating the very best travel experiences for your clients. That's direct mail and email personalized professional printed pieces, all at no cost. So we don't have to pay for this. Once we create the list, and, sub and submit the list to IntelliTravel, a list of 50 people, uh, names, telephone numbers, email address, physical mailing address so that they can receive it, um, and send it into IntelliTravel in a, a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. And once you send it into custom service at IntelliTravel.com, you will be now sent to, it will now be uploaded to Ensemble and they will be able to send your clients out and they'll learn your clients' preferences and send them things uh, within their preference, within their zip code, within their budget. They customize it. So take advantage of this, guys. This is a great way to brand yourself. And your clients will always, and then they share it with people and people come visit and they see it on their counter. And what is this? Oh my, this is really nice. And your name is on it. Give them, you know, they give you a call, they contact you. So you definitely want to utilize this. This is a great way to really brand ourselves <clears throat> and market ourselves to attract new clients, right? Finding new clients. This is what we're talking about. How do we find new clients? How do we attract ourselves and become attractive so that clients would want to book with us? Because like I said before, guys, people buy into us. They don't buy into the company, our host agency. They buy into us as independent travel agents. And it's all about our knowledge, our experience, and what we, how we choose to uh, share uh, travel with them and paint a picture and help open up their imaginations is what we really are supposed to do. So, you know, if we're doing those things, then we'll see that we'll start attracting certain types of people. And then before you know it, your clientele is out the window. So weddings is a great, wedding shows are a great <clears throat> way to attract new clients. So find the wedding shows in your area. Uh, clients are very open-minded, guys, when they're shopping. Brides and, and, and mother-in-laws and all of them and groups and bridesmaids and uh, all of them, they're, they're excited and very, very open-minded. Sometimes they didn't even have time to think of a honeymoon or think of a bridesmaid trip or whatever, but they really want to do it, and you just happen to be there. Um, you establish a relationship with them, and before you know it, you're booking their bridesmaid's trip for them or their honeymoon that they didn't have a chance to plan because they were planning this super big wedding and got super busy. So this is a great way for you to expose yourself as the business professional that you are and attract new clients. <clears throat> Wedding planners are also great people to connect with uh, because they're always working with new people and you can connect with those new people that they're working with if you're connected to them. So that's a great way to expose yourself as well. Um, the tourist board, when you go to wedding shows, the tourist boards are there. Um, they're not selling travel. They're actually educating the, the brides and the grooms and those people um, about the destinations. So if you're a travel agent and you're there, you'll be able to um, book those same clients at, to that same exact destination because that's where you connected them. So it's only fair that you book them to that specific destination that you met them at and not sell them someplace else. I mean, because, you know, we're booking travel with integrity, right? So we're definitely going to not sell them somewhere else. But it's a great way to connect and attract more clients, more clientele, and book them, okay? That's a great way. You also want to wear a travel agent rock pin like this one or a T-shirt. It's a conversation starter, guys. I People say, oh, travel agent? They still have those? That's the first thing. I'm so accustomed to it, it doesn't even affect me. It never bothered me, but some agents told me they kind of feel uncomfortable. And no, especially the new ones coming into the business and never really did travel. They're like, people are telling me the travel agents don't exist and 
<laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we are live, alive and kicking, okay? Find out if that person travels often, okay? When you're having a conversation with them, you know, I like to, I always like to say travel often. That's a great way after you introduce yourself and, you know, you talk about the basic things to break the ice. That's how I lead my conversations. I always take the lead because I already know where it's going to go. So I would say, you know, um, travel often. And if they say yes, then I'll say, well, where have you been? Where have you traveled to? And they'll tell me. And then I'll say, so where are you expecting to go next? Where are you looking to go next? And I'll let them tell me. And in the meantime, I'm just taking it all in because I'm then going to regurgitate it back out to them. I'm going to drip on them with hot deals. Uh, I'm going to drip on them with any promotions that the preferred suppliers um, send me an email on or whatever the case may be if it's pertaining to their destination. I'm going to drip on them. You see what I'm saying? So this is how I just develop the relationship with someone in the, in, waiting in, the, in the waiting area because you're getting your car service at the car dealership or at the grocery store. You might be in the produce section. My husband has a way of having conversation with people because we're organic, and he will have conversations with people in the grocery store section. So, you know, a great way to have conversation, basic conversations. It doesn't take anything to talk about travel. Travel often, that's how you do it. Travel often, two words. And people are like, oh, I love to travel. I just don't get the time to travel. Got them. Oh, I traveled the other day. Got them. Oh, I'm about to travel. Got them. Whatever they say, got them. Oh, I never travel. Got them. Because then now you can share things with them and enlighten them. It's what we do, okay? So we, anyone that comes close to us, we should be talking to them and, and letting them know about our business. Invite them for coffee. So I'm jumping the gun here. So you want to find, when you find that person, you want to ask them, have they ever been on a, a cruise? Because you have Travel Agent Rocks, right? And it's Carnival, right? So, hey, it's Carnival. So you then ask them, do you crew, have you ever been on a cruise? And if they said yes, they've been on several cruises, ask them, have you ever been on a river cruise? Or if they said no, they've never been on, on a cruise, have you, ask them, have you ever heard of a river cruise? And it's, it's a different, it's a different type of cruise. You'll, what you'll do when you say river cruise is you'll separate yourself from all the other travel agents that approached them before and talked about a cruise. You're talking about a river cruise. And especially if you know Riviera or one of the, the river cruises, um, Viking or whatever, you, and you name it and you, you have information and you have knowledge because you've been on the webinars and you can share a little tidbit with them, got them, okay? This is how we start. We establish a relationship with uh, new people. We find new clients. And we keep in touch. We have newsletters that you can send to them so that they can get to know you and know what's going on. I have a travel agent friend that's with a totally different travel agency. She sends, well, she actually is totally independent. Um, she sends the most beautiful newsletters, amazing newsletters. And I'm going to call her one day and I'm going to talk to her and share them because she, she really goes in. She gets really creative. And I'm going to really talk with her and, and share that with you guys as well because whatever I learn, I share, right? So then you, want, you also want to... Um, and another thing, too, don't assume, guys, because we like to assume and we like to budget people. We like to handle, we like to become people's budget managers, and we're not that. We're travel agents. We paint pictures and we sell value. We don't sell prices. We sell value. Another thing, sidebar, but it's pertaining, uh, a lot of agents are um, really getting frustrated about air because um, they're having clients call them and tell them, well, I found the air $300 less and I saw it $50 less or let me just let, give you a <clears throat> position to be in when it comes to a conversation like that with your clients. We sell value, okay? We don't sell prices and discounts. We don't get the, we don't get the cheapest. We don't, this is not a discount club. <laughs> so we sell value. So when you find a client that is, your, that is going outside of you and going and searching for travel, then that's not a client that you want. Don't invest energy and efforts into them because they're not going to book with you. They're going to book with whatever they're, they have the time to find. You want to attract clients who are super busy, love traveling, don't have the time with, and trust you. This is why we want to establish and develop a relationship with people before we push travel on them. We want to get common ground with them so that we can uh, share information with them and they won't feel pressured and harassed. And when they're ready, all they think of is you because Every time you have a conversation, there's some kind of travel and you're not selling them. We're having 
basic conversation on travel. You're not selling them on, oh, well, book, I would love to book your travel for you. No, you're not doing that. You're having basic conversations with, I've heard other people who are not travel agents talk five minutes about travel and didn't even know each other. We're all in the waiting area. And I'm sitting there quiet as the travel agent, and I said nothing. And when I left the room, I'm like, What's wrong with you? You could have gotten two different clients right there because I could have interjected, but I didn't want to be, I, I, this is when I first started the business. I didn't want to become, seem so aggressive and, you know, oh, but this is what you do. People talk about travel and they, they're not even in the business. So you having a basic conversation with where you've been and where you're going, it's not selling travel. It's finding out about your client's preferences because then they'll start telling you about name brands and they'll start telling you about certain destinations and you already know what the budget is for those destinations. So you don't have to have that conversation later on with them because you're learning about their preferences initially, in that initial conversation when you first met. You're breaking the ice in a very fun way because travel is fun and travel is sexy. Everyone wants to talk about travel, so you're never going down the wrong road when you talk about travel. When you start to sell travel to people on an initial uh, conversation, then that's a problem. That's where you're going to lose them because then you become really pushy and aggressive without even finding out about them, right? So we don't want to do that. Invite them to have coffee. Okay, so I'm skipping again. Here we go. Don't assume they can afford it because if, what if they have a family member or a parent who are going to be having a 50th wedding anniversary? This is a great way for them to do it on a cruise because we already know river cruises, they have a certain age group. The majority of a certain, the baby boomers love um, river cruising. So when they're come, when, if they're having a, a 50th wedding anniversary, then you know they were like in their 70s or 60s or 70s. They didn't get married when they were 10, so they're in their, six, they're in their 70s or almost 80s, and they would love a river cruise. They would love to experience that before they move on to the great beyond. So people, they're very open to these types of um, traveling. So definitely have an open mind, and you don't just have to focus on just basic packages. People want to experience. This is what they're paying for. They're paying for lifelong experiences, and we sell value. So stop being a, a budget manager and stop looking at your client's budget and saying what you think they can afford. Present them with the quotes of what they request and build, but before build that relationship with them, then you'll be able to prevent, present them because now you know them, you learn them. You have to, we have to be unique to attract people to us. You know, every person sitting next to us at a doctor's office or a, uh, like I said, your, your car dealership service department because you're there for an hour or two servicing your cars and people are coming and going. So you can be establishing relationships, giving a business card and getting a business card because that's how you exchange, you know, your business card is, I look at my business cards as money. My travel cards are money. Whenever I hand it to you, that's because I need to get some information back from you because we're going to do business, right? Because you already know I'm a travel agent. I don't give you my card without telling you I'm a travel agent, and I don't give you my card if you don't want it. So I look at my cards as money, and so I treat it as such. When I give, it, give a card, I receive information back. If you don't have a card, I will be on my phone, and I'll be putting your contact information in my notes so that I can go back at the end of the night and see my notes because if I put it in my contacts right away, I'll forget it too many people in the contacts already, but when I go into my notes, it has to date on it where I met them and who they are and their preferences because I can type whatever I want in my notes section and I keep it there. And then when I get home or when I get to a place where I can settle and focus and add them to my contacts, then I transfer them over so that you can keep up with your clients. It's a great way I found that, you know, I keep up with people that I meet on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Okay. I can see now we're not going to get through the hour. I'm sorry. I talk so much. So, guys, do a self – so after you've met your clients and you've introduced yourself and you find ways, do a self-evaluation, okay? And the focus questions are going to be what are your travel experiences now? As far as education and as far as hands-on experience, meaning education, you go into the suppliers webinars and you've inundated yourself with the information and you learn the product and you know how to better sell it. And then you've also took a few fam trips and visited um, certain destinations, so now you have the experience, and when you start selling it, you can sell it verbatim. You can tell them all about from the first time you walk into the lobby and the big basket that they have in the lobby and the smell that you smelled when you walked in, and they sh as soon as you walked in, they served you with a glass of wine. It was just the right taste. It was not too dry. It was not too sweet. I mean, you can go into detail. People buy into it, guys. I'm speaking from experience. 
I would take a trip to Florida and stay at a resort and share that experience with someone. They want to go there just because I shared it with them, but because I was there, as opposed to me reading about it or watching a webinar, I was actually there. So experience, hands-on experience is very important for a travel agent because now selling imagination, selling, you know, we, we, we open up our clients' imaginations, and in order to sell that, in order to do that, you have to be there. You have to be in that place where you can actually share it with them, and, they, and it's believable because it, it's true, right? So that's what you definitely want to do. Um, what is you? Then you also want to ask yourself, what is your expected amount of revenue you're looking to generate in your travel business within the next six months, three months, a year? Because now you, you're pursuing clients now. You're building up clientele. You know that every person that can come close to you, that you say good morning and hello to, you should be able to have a conversation with and let them know that you're a travel agent and <clears throat> get their information. I'm not saying running around, running around talking to everybody and, hold up, everyone, let me just let you know that I'm a travel agent and here's my card no absolutely not one on one this is a personal thing a lot of times people don't even want people to know they're traveling they just want to disappear so a lot of times you just want to always be private and confidential with your clients and keep it low okay um, so how much time are you will you dedicate to your travel business that's another question too because you can't run after clients get a bunch of clients, and then when it's time to book travel, you just don't have the time because you never allotted the time. You never respected your travel business enough to say, let me go ahead and allot two hours a day every day into booking travel, whether it's learning about travel or actually booking because you may not have any clients yet. You may still be established in a relationship because you're very new, but you can also educate yourself within those two hours so that you'll be knowledgeable, and when your clients contact you, you'll know how to do quotes, you'll know the qualifying questions to ask them because you're knowledgeable and you'll know the suppliers, you're already registered with all of them and you know, you'll be able to do things. So you want to invest some time into your travel business as much as you can for the day or for the week. Um, this is where you'll see success, guys, okay? This is where you'll see success. Have you also considered your niche? We talked about that last week about your niche, okay, narrowing it down some. I mean, I sell all travel. I'm a full travel agent. However, I have a focus, and I focus on group cruises, okay? I told you, I mentioned to you guys that last year when I first went to CLIA, and I was so amazed with the entire cruise industry, and I realized the revenue that's there, and in order for me to really set a realistic budget for my business and to really grow my travel business, I needed to anchor down a little bit. I'm knowledgeable in all other um, components of travel, and I have access to them, but my focus is more group cruises. And now what's happening, because I'm focusing on that more, I'm attracting group cruisers more. So now they're calling me out of the woodworks, because with group cruises, when five people go on a group cruise, that's five people that knows at least 100 people. So you just spread your business out within those five people that you – that invited their people and you ended up having a group and everybody from that group will be able to contact you individually and create their own group. So it's a great way to really increase your clientele and your revenue. So now I'm able to set realistic goals for my travel business for the year, for three months, for six months, um, as far as cruises and as far as land packages, right? So you definitely want to go there and really take your business very serious. You invested in this and you want to see a return on your investment triple over, a hundred times over, a million times over. <laughs> How much time will you dedicate to your travel business, education and hands-on experience? I think I had that before. Have you been utilizing the $100,000 marketing system through our host agency? I mentioned that earlier. That's just the portion of it. Okay, we have so much marketing material and systems to use within Intel Travel that we don't have to go outside of it and spend money to market ourselves, okay? So definitely take some time when you're spending that, uh, that two hours that you're allotting for your travel business, look into the marketing part of what we have and take some time to go through Ensemble, um, check them out. Again, whenever you're booking, you know, you want to definitely check out Ensemble to see what extra perks they have for your clients. If you're booking a cruise, you want to go into Ensemble and search that itinerary and see what additional perks so that you can let the cruise lines know you are with uh, Ensemble and they'll apply those perks to your itinerary for your clients. 
that just makes you look like an even better educated, informative travel agent because now you know where to go to access the resources to have your clients customize packages ready for them, right? Just some of the tools that we can use, guys. Have you infused your skills with your niche? So we all have professions. <clears throat> some of us are here stylists. Some of our us are nail technicians. Some of us are dentists. Well, I don't know how we can do that, but, you know, you definitely, um, well, you can because dentist wears a jacket, and you can put a little pin on there. Not travel agent rock, but you can put a little pin with an anchor. It's a conversation piece. We, we want to definitely merge, um, infuse our skills with our niche, and the reason why is because people in our network are familiar with our skills, with what we are, our profession is. Um, and when you're now you're first buying a travel agency and owning a travel agency, they don't know you as a travel agent, right? So you have to find a way to merge your profession with your, 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 your niche. You know, maybe you work in a doctor's office. Offer a cruise, a group cruise, because you already know that you're going towards cruising or whatever the case may be. I'm just saying, I'm just speaking from me. If I worked in a doctor's office, I would definitely, by six months in or three months in or a few weeks in the business, if I just started, I would already, uh, I would have already spoken to half the people in my office, and I would have already offered a group cruise especially if everyone is just like on the side, you know how employees are always complaining, oh, I'm so tired, I need a break. And like, you know, if I hear two or three people complaining, I'm like, listen, guys, how about, how about we just do a group cruise, like amongst the employees and just amongst ourselves on the low, and then, you know, we can probably share with some of the cool guys or whoever there, whatever the case may be. However, present it. Get them going. Get the idea going, okay? This is a great way. A small group, privately. And then before you know it, the company is probably going to find out about it and say, hey, Marcia, how come you never told us you're a travel agent? You know, it's my, my home business. I keep it at home. Wink, wink. <laughs> and then they say, well, I, the employees have been talking about this awesome cruise they've been on. How about we do an annual? It happens, guys. A lot of us work for smaller companies, not so big corporations, that it happens. Okay, I've had travel agents that said that to me. They've had their employees, they grab a group of employees together, and they went on a small cruise, and before you know it, they were like, well, we want to know about the next one. Can you let us know? The not-so-cool people who weren't invited the first time? Yeah, those. <laughs> So, you know, the, this is what, and, and, and travel is fun. Travel is light. You know, you can break the ice with travel. So there's no reason why we can't propel our travel business with infusing our profession with the niche. Maybe you want to do just Jamaica. Maybe everyone should go to Jamaica. That's because that's how you feel. Whenever you go to Jamaica, you want to become a Jamaica specialist. Um, you can still cruise. They have cruises going to Jamaica, too, so you can still book a cruise if you want to, but you can focus on land packages. They have sandals. They have the overwater bungalows. Oh, my goodness. And you can get sandals through Delta um, vacations now. Um, so, you know, I mean, inside tip. <laughs> so, you know, you definitely want to get creative and infuse your profession with your niche, whatever you decide to really focus on in travel, and that's a great way to increase your clientele because now you're infusing your network that you already have, that they already respect you and know of you, um, and if you're a very good worker and a hard worker, and they see that you're now owning your own business, um, they'll respect you even more, and they'll join you. They'll want to, uh, you know, for you to book travel for them, and they have groups, and they have family reunions and anniversaries and weddings, so you want to get with that, okay? Have you joined a members-only organization skills or similar? We mentioned that before. Um, this is a self-check. This is an agent check checklist guys so as I share these things with you I really expect you guys to really utilize them I just don't want to talk because I know stuff I want to share things with you guys that you guys can actually implement and utilize to help improve you know going down that successful road for your travel business have you established a relationship with some of the small businesses that we talked about showing them ways that they can incentivize their staff and increase revenue within their company we talked about that last week or the week before um, not last week, the week before last week. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, you want to definitely get into that, guys. Have you done a survey yet? We talked about that. Going around, do a small survey, you know. <clears throat> do a survey about people. Find out what people around you would like to see more of when working with a travel agent. And that way you're sharpening your skills. 
because now you already know that they said, well, I would love to see more complimentary, blah, 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 or whatever the case may be, then now you're going to go find out if we have access to that and if we do where it is and how can I access it and what do I have to do. And you just educated yourself even more because you want to get back to that client and let them know, well, actually, it's the business is very new to me, but I did some digging and I found out that, and you can let them know. So, you know, this is great ways to establish a relationship. Uh, travel is fun, guys, so don't be so uptight. Agent tools, contacting your BDM. So a lot of us are doing groups, um, whether it's cruises or whether it's land packages. Um, and, you know, with groups, they can be pretty complicated, but I think they're fun. I don't think they're complicated at all because our suppliers make it so easy for us to deal with groups that it's so not complicated. Um, the old-fashioned way is definitely complicated, but this today's way, 2018 way, it's not, in my opinion. Um, so when contacting the business development manager guys, our role as agents is to know the sales tools offered by the suppliers. So like I said, the webinars and educating yourself about the product of the suppliers is great because then once you understand the product of the suppliers, then you know where to go to access the products and utilize them before we get to the point where we need to contact the business development manager. We only want to contact your BDMs when you've accessed all the tools that you've been given and you just can't come to a resolution for whatever the issue may be, then you want to reach out to your business development manager. But we don't just contact our business development managers just because we have an issue. Uh, you know, we have reps for that. We have Intel Travel Liaison. That's, there are li liaison for that. Uh, we have so many different outlets. All of the suppliers have all of their tools and their products and um, support systems and everything on their websites or a phone call. And so we have so many different levels to get to before we contact the business development manager. So I just wanted to drop that in there for you guys because um, I don't want them to be overwhelmed and when they uh, meet with us, they're like running from us <laughs> because we've been stalking them. So you want to definitely take some time to inform you, educate yourself on the products and then you won't need, feel the need to contact the business, the business development manager only when necessary, okay? So customer, back to customer relationships. Um, qualify, ask qualifying questions, guys. Like I mentioned before, you want to know what are your interests? Why are you traveling? What do you normally, who do you normally travel with? Where have you been? Where do you want to go next? Are you a cruiser? Which hotel brands do you like and are comfortable with? When you ask that question, now you don't have to ask the budget question because now they're going to tell you the brand. And if they say Marriott, then you know they like clean and comfortable. And, you know, Marriott, you can go blindfolded and you know it'll always be clean. You'll always have certain standards with Marriott properties. You know, certain hotel brands, you have certain Marriott um, levels of standards. So if they say um, the Conrad or they start saying boutique uh, brands, then you know that they're going towards the luxury side. So then you, now you know how to categorize them. Which cruise lines do you like and, and comfortable with? Same thing like um, with the brands. Then you'll know if, you know, if they say carnival, then you know they're party animals. They love to party. They love to have a great time. If they say Holland, then you know that they're more on the luxury side. If they say crystal cruises, then you know where they are. If they say they love, love river cruises and they start naming off all the river cruises, then you know exactly where, what kind of category you're going to place them in. So these are great qualifying questions to ask your clients to have a better understanding of their travel preference. And this is a great these are questions to ask in that initial conversation I talked about. I mean, you don't have to ask them all, but pick a few of them, you know. Where are you traveling to next? Do you usually go with friends or family or do you travel alone? Well, sometimes that can be a little, because they're like, well, why are you asking me that, some people. Um, but where have you been? Where are you going? Where do you want to go next? Are you a cruiser? You know, what are your interests when you travel? You know, some people like to do bird watching or, you know, go to the Galapagos and experience exotic creatures or whatever the case may be. You want to know what their interests are. Maybe they're photographers. Maybe they're yoga instructors and they can take a whole group there. You just struck it rich with uh, this particular client, but you didn't ask the right questions, so you didn't hook them. So you want to definitely get some of these qualifying questions and then factor it into your conversation with your clients, initial clients, when you first introduce yourself so you can get them out of the way and they'll know that you're a travel agent. You won't even have to say, are you a travel agent? So they'll probably say that because of how you articulate and how you lead the conversation, lead it. 
because you already know, you're already sizing them up as a client. You already know that you want them to be, they don't know that you're a travel agent, but you know that you want them to be your client. So you're going to lead the conversation naturally, right? So personal support system. A lot of times we, um, as, as when we're looking for um, clients, excuse me, I'm a bit stuffy. We're looking for personal, we have a personal support system, right? Um, which is our family members, right? Our, our parents, our family members, the word to mouthers. When we first start our travel business, we tell all our close relatives and friends and their neighbors and stuff, and they spread the word, right? And that's their support system because even if they don't book with us, they still, they're still happy for us, and they send people our way because they don't really travel as much or half the time, and maybe they do once a year, so they'll get to you, they'll book with you, but in the meantime, they're sending all these people to you. They're your support system. They support you, and even though they don't book with you or they may book with you, they're still sending people your way, so we have that, right? It's important for your village to be behind you in your new venture. Um, your fellow agents and peers um, in and out of your network, okay? That's another support system. What, um, you know, share what is, what is working with you, what's working for you and others you've met. Send them a note letting them know that it was nice to meet you, you know, when you meet people, this is what you want to do. You want to build, also building a business relationship with your new clients, okay? So once you get personal with them, we talk about our families and, you know, where we're going and, you know, what we're, where we've been and all of this stuff and graduation and birthdays and all of that good stuff, then you definitely want to establish um, building a business relationship with your new clients, right? Um, because now you're talking outside of them traveling, you're talking about what they're doing, what they, what their professions are, and how you can um, insert yourself in there and create whatever their profession is. Maybe they're gardeners, or maybe they can go to exotic places and, and see exotic um, hybrids and whatever the case may be. You know, people, it's just so amazing. Um, the groups of people out there who are willing to venture via vacation style traveling uh, and not just getting on a plane and going places. They would like to be, to use a travel agent to have everything laid out so that they can really focus on the whole purpose of them going. So, you know, Corporate America does that. When, whenever Corporate America books send you on a trip for you business um, executives, when they send you on a trip, they, you, all you get is an itinerary. They have the hotel book, your air is booked, your car is there. Everything is already there for you, and all you have to do is just go focus on work, okay? Everything is set for you. They sent you in an environment closer to the, where the business meeting is going to be. Everything is already set up. So that's the same thing with groups and people who want to travel um, for their profession or their love or their passion, but they don't want to have to just get online and order. They want someone to take care of all of the little details and all the extra stuff and even their dinners. They want to be taken care of. So you want to be that person. You have to establish a relationship, a good relationship with them from the start in order to, for it to endure and you get to that point. Nurturing the relationship with your older clients. Send them birthday cards, guys. Remember when their kids are going to college or graduating from college. Send them anniversary cards. If they're not going anywhere and, you know, they didn't contact you to book and you didn't invite them to book for, for your, their anniversary, send them an anniversary card. You know, you want to keep the old relationships going. So as you incorporate the new, you nurture the old. Now you're growing because clientele, uh, clients, tell people about their best time ever in this island and that island, and that will be you. The common denominator will always be you. So building relationships with your preferred suppliers, very important. You may have to go outside of your preferred suppliers in order to satisfy your client's needs. You want to be able to establish a relationship with them as well, okay, because you never know when you'll need their services again just because they're not a preferred supplier doesn't mean that, you know, you're not going to be contacting them again, especially if your client had a fabulous time. Uh, you definitely would want to, um, you know, establish a relationship with them so that you can get that service again in the future, right? And then, of course, building the relationship with your, business, your supplier's business development manager um, so that whenever you do contact them, they will respond to you because you have not been stalking them, right? You have a really good relationship and you only contact them when necessary. So you definitely want to establish a relationship with your business development managers and your suppliers too because I'm going to tell you, I had a couple of issues, not issues, but little stuff went on with one of my suppliers, my air suppliers, and I contacted when I went to ITQ Quest in January in Orlando, I met the um, suppliers 
and I had conversations about them. They talk about my red hair, and we were just so funny. You know, travel is so much fun, so those meetings are always great. And so I was able to establish a relationship with both of them. And so now whenever anything goes down that may not look right or whatever, I'll send them a quick email or I'll send them a text because I have their cell phone numbers locked in now. Um, and they will respond and they'll say, hi, girl, how are you? And it's just so great. I'm like, we have to go out to these events and we have to establish relationship with these suppliers. We have to so that we can definitely create those packages for our clients that our clients are coming to us to, to receive, right? What, uh, with that information, now you have all the information, you're able to categorize your clients, okay? So now you already know when you ask the qualifying questions, um, you, you know where these clients are, okay? So now you know you have a four-and-a-half-star traveler who tends to like small boutique hotels and smaller ships. Then, you know, you also have this uber luxury client, uh, and they like big ships and traditional luxury hotels. So now you know once you've captured the right information, you're able to now give your clients a quote that they won't refuse because you have included all the brands and all the things and that they're comfortable with and they love. So now they're definitely going to book with you. It's, it's a wrap. It's in the bag. Less work. You didn't have to do much because initially you established a relationship, and when you were establishing the relationship, you had conversations about small little things that you were able to factor into the package and create this awesome package for them. And now they're running off with them out to all their peoples about how awesome their trip was. And then they're like, well, how did you get that trip, girl? I called my travel agent, and he or she took care of it for me. This is what you want. So you want to know your clients. Cruisers or non-cruisers, non-stop flyers, medical condition, special needs. You want to know these things because non-stop flights, um, a lot of people can't stay long in the air or they would rather connecting. A lot of people with medical condition would actually rather connecting flights than the, not, than the, the you know, long, especially going to Europe in such a long, they would rather stop over and have stopovers, and I've learned that because of their medical condition. They, can't, they don't want to be in the air too long. So you want to know these things, okay? You listen to their needs. We have to listen to them uh, and listen more than we talk. I, I talked about that this morning. Two ears, one mouth. We quiet, we listen to them, and we take notes so that when they tell us little things, we'll know when we create that future package what they like and what they don't like, what they prefer and what they don't prefer, okay? Know the market as well, guys. We have to know our market. You have to know what season, when is the best season to send someone to certain destinations in certain regions. You have to know that, okay? You have to know industry news and weather, okay? You want to know the hottest destinations. Right now, Cuba is it. Overnight in Cuba is it. You know, people want to even, they don't even want to cruise anymore. They want to actually fly to Cuba and stay five, six days overnight. You know, so it's a really hot destination. Um, you want to know passport and visas requirements and guidelines for different regions because some people say, some regions say um, six months within expiration date, some say a year. You don't want your clients to be stuck in any region because you didn't take the time to look up and do the research for that particular region, okay? So these are things that you definitely want to do, and this will also help you establish a relationship, a better relationship with your clients, because now they're going to say, oh, my gosh, that Marcia, she just knows me in and out. She was really paying attention when I was having a conversation with her, right? Okay, so travel insurance. You want to make sure that whenever you create a package, you always, always, always include travel insurance in every booking that you create, air, hotel, cruise, land, packages, groups. You want to. Okay, you want to find a plan that's suitable for your client's preference. You, it's 20% commissions, guys. So you don't want to just run after the commissions. You want to make sure that you find a suitable package for your clients. Okay, why sell travel insurance? It's beneficial that your clients invest in a plan, especially when the policies are super, super low. Okay, they're super low. Cancel for no reason. They can cancel for any reason. Uh, clients feel trapped due to lack of info. A lot of times clients reject travel insurance because of the lack of info. So when you ask them if they would like travel insurance, they're automatically going to say no. But if you create the quote and you insert the travel insurance, let them tell you that they don't want it, okay? Most of the times they will not. They will not. They will take it. So, you know, it's up to you. And like I said, it's additional 20% commission. This is a great way to increase your revenue as well. We're talking about increasing your clientele and ways of increasing your commissions, right? That's what we're focusing on as independent travel agents and branding yourself. So 
So you want to do certain things, little things that you do on a daily basis, you will see the pattern will be formed. And before you know it, you already know what to do. You're very familiar with it. And all your clients are loving it. They don't mind the travel insurance because they realize that there's a possibility that they may have a medical condition or there's a possibility that maybe they're a police officer or they're EMT and they just had to automatically got switched. The schedule got switched. So now they can't join the group or they can't go on this um, weekend getaway that they had with their spouses and now they have to cancel. You can't give them their money back because you never even offered travel insurance to them. So you want to be really mindful of that and insert it into your quote. Let them tell you that they don't want travel insurance, okay? And travel insurance is a great company that we work with. Like I said, they pay 20% commissions. So, you know, happy booking, guys. <laughs> be sure to that you are selecting the, the best policy suitable for your clients and not for the purpose of commissions, okay? Okay, suppliers, plans may be more beneficial to clients, so consider those as well. You may be in VAX or wherever, and you may compare travel insured to them. Um, you may find that the, the one that they have may be more suitable for your clients. So you have to override the 20% commissions and go with them. We're travel agents, and we, we're working for our clients. So even though we're working for commissions as well, our clients come first. Our clients' preference comes first. Okay, so be mindful of that. Just do your research, and once you do the research, you will get the answers. So last week I mentioned, the week before last week I mentioned agent fans, right? And this is a creative way, and remember I always say think outside of the box, guys. Let's be unique, okay? Um, agent fam trips. When you go on agent fam trips, guys, and I just thought about this, going on agent fam trips and experiencing certain things, I'm like, wow, this, this is a really great way um, to use a creative ideas to organize your own groups. Okay, because a lot of times people are like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I have all these people around me, but I don't know what to do. So when you go on an agent fam trip and you experience these areas, one of the reasons why the, the suppliers are presenting these fam trips to us guys is so that we can sell them to our clients. So when you say that you can't, you don't, you can't, you're telling yourself obviously that you don't, you can't think outside of the box and you can't, you can't be creative. Go, go to the fam, fam pages. Go into your back office. Go scroll down and just take some time to look at all those different fams. You will get. So many creative ideas, and then before you know it, you realize, you know what? I have a, I have a bishop in my, I have a, I have a photographer. I have a some. I know this person that's a network. I know this person that's a, 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 a IT person. I know, and they will love this. This is great. I'm telling you, I did it, and I was surprised. I'm like, wow, I see groups. I see all kinds of groups because I know certain people that would enjoy that. So if I, if I share that with them, then they'll be able to take it to their group and they'll be able to come back to me and say, yes, Marcio, it's a great idea. We would love to do that. I just did that. I just finalized the booking today doing that. So that's what I'm sharing with you guys. Right? So now we have... This is what we have. We already have access to all of this, right? We have shore excursions. We have travel insured. So we have shore excursions for when you book the groups. Okay, let me start right here from this side. We have hotels, cars, vacation packages, flights, cruises, preferred partners. We have passport resources. We have VIP partner exclusive. We have hot deals, right? This is what we have access to. We also have shore excursions where we can book um, excursions, tours for our clients, once they get off the cruise ship or wherever they're flying or wherever, right? Um, we also have travel insurance where we can add travel insurance and help our clients to protect their package. And we also have activities. And we also have um, uh, vacation rentals as well. So with all of these components of travel, we can use this to create groups for our clients, incorporating those great ideas from the fams that you took some time to scroll down. I'm just opening up your mind here. I can't do it for you guys. Okay, I can just pitch information to you guys. You guys got to run with it, right? Because I just want to see you guys successful. So if you, you know, take some of these and get creative. Your network and my network are two totally different networks. You may see something in here that would be so easy for you because, because of the, the, the dynamics of your network and the people or where you are. Maybe you're in a small town far away uh, from big cities and people are just dying to get away. Anything you pitch to them, they will buy into because it's you and they love you and they're buying into you. So any little thing, get creative. And, and make sure that there's something in it for them. There should always be something in it for your clients, okay? Use these tools, guys. We have them. Utilize them. Great ways to create your own trips, okay? 
knitting groups, yoga groups, special dance groups, scrapbooks, photography groups, foodie groups, girls groups, guys groups, sororities and fraternity groups, sports groups. Um, I was just on a webinar last week, I think, with Jessica, the UK webinar, and she said um, she said um, she was in a hotel somewhere and she saw people um, uh, sitting. All everyone was just sitting down in a hotel room in the conference room area. They were all sitting on the floor and they all had like patches. I think it was like a patching. Um, maybe it's like a quilting uh, group. Uh, and they were all in this conference room at the hotel where she was, and they were just spread out on the floor. And they were all, this is a group, and they were having a great time doing it. They spent the whole day there. Picture them on a cruise ship. Pitch the idea to them. You know, you may be at a hotel, you may, you may work at a hotel, and you see all types of groups coming in and going. Pitch the idea to your clients and have them, you know, you never know what groups people are. People are in bird watching groups and um, scrapbooking groups and quilting groups and knitting groups and yoga groups. All these groups are people people are in. And if you just pitch the idea to them, guys, they will buy in and now they become your Pied Piper and now they receive all the great perks that you're going to get for them and they'll be happy. Their clients will be happy. You just got a whole new set of clients because Susan, the yoga instructor, just brought 500 people or let's say 50 people to you and those 50 people, 25 of them contacted you after the group cruise and they wanted to book with you and they had wedding anniversaries and they had girls trips and they had business trips and they had cruises and they had all these different components of travel that they needed to get done and you are going to do all of them simply because you exposed yourself and you were creative and you shared information with people and you opened their minds is what we do and now you're reaping the re rewards of them, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So real quick, I'm going to wrap up in a minute. Um, with Travel Weekly, again, guys, I always say register with these suppliers, guys. We talked about, um, you know, earlier we talked about um, keeping up with your clients and keeping them informed with certain information within the travel industry. This is how you stay connected. Condé Nast and all these different mag um, travel magazines is how you – Stay involved and stay connected with current information. Travel Weekly, register with them. Make sure you get the newsletter, Travel Pulse. All of these supply, these um, uh, resources are here for travel agents to be informed. Okay, so you want to do that. I was just on a webinar right before I started this one. Um, it was Abercrombie and Kent. Great, great, great webinar. If you guys missed it, go back to the. Um, the Intel Travel Intel tutorial and pull that webinar up. Great webinar, great, awesome destinations. Um, they also and I dropped. I was able to drop this really quick in there um, in the in this slide before I started. Um, they were mentioning in Condé Nast Traveler. You go to Abercrombie and Kent, and you can definitely register um, with. Condé Nast Travelers. You can follow up with um, Ab Abercrombie and Kent A News. You can register with them. So I just wanted to drop this in here so you guys can go to the webinar and make sure that you utilize this because now you'll get awesome information about all the destinations and all the packages that they have. Amazing. I was so mesmerized by this, this webinar this evening because I have clients who are looking to do um, trips to Africa, group trips to Africa, and they, they just gave me great ideas um, as I watched that webinar. So I just wanted to drop that um, on you guys. Also, Cruise World coming up in November, November 7th to the 9th in Fort Lauderdale, guys. Um, Register. That's all I can say. I, I gained a lot of knowledge, especially about commissions and clientele, stuff that I share with you guys here. I learned last year in Cruise World, okay? So I'm just sharing information with you guys and exposing you guys to um, resources that will help you grow in your travel business. Um, Cruise World, this is, these are stats for attendees who attended Cruise World. Um, these are the percentage of what they booked, all-inclusive vacations, 93%, hotels and resorts, 93%, ocean cruises, 93%, family travel. Look at it, all the way down. So, you know, and these are some of the suppliers that um, sponsors um, Travel Weekly's Cruise World. So you'll definitely be able to see all your business development managers. They actually have, last year I was there, they had a, um, a business development forum with all BDMs from Royal Carnival, all the different um, cruise lines, and we were able to ask questions, and it was amazing. Any issues that we were having, and 
we were finding we will find out if other agents were having it as well because then when they stood up and asked we didn't have to ask so I learned a lot it was de definitely um, not the same as clear I would say attend both of them because you get something different from each one there's also the 10th annual travel agent forum coming up in Las Vegas March 20th to the 23rd of 2019 guys they have an early bird special um, this is for travel agents traveling is all over the world so don't miss it. Invest in your business, guys. Okay, it's the Paris Hotel and Casino. It has nothing to do with Intel Travel or anything. It's just travel industry, okay? And also unlimited rewards. I can't sit, stop talking about this. Register if you haven't registered already. Whenever you're renting, you're booking rental cars for your clients, you can use Avis and Budget. You can use your um, unlimited rewards number, your UR number. Um, whenever you're booking with Hilton or Carry or Embark, you can definitely use them as well. When you're traveling outside of the country, there's a $35 saving for rentals, rentals outside of the country for agents. So you also get a, um, a gift card. They send a, they send a, uh, they send a um, a prepaid visa card with your accumulations and you can use it I used mine in Florida when I went in um, in June to the yacht thing so you know um, they're great there's also the cash in club you can use um, them when you book with Alamo and Enterprise and National and you can accumulate your points and they send you a visa gift card sorry um, you get a visa gift card as you can see there and you can definitely use it to shop so I just want to put that in there. You guys need help. This is where I got most of my information from. Of course, the other information about um, commissions and clientele and stuff, I got them from the uh, trainings that I got when I went to CLIA and Cruise World and those seminars that I attend. I share information with you guys here. I actually paid for those, those, um, that information that I share with you guys for free. So I hope that you guys are really utilizing it because I got it from professionals who have been doing it for years in the industry and they're successful at it. And when I apply it, it actually works for me. And so that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. So I really hope that you guys are taking what I share with you tonight and you're really applying and utilizing it. It's only to help your travel business to grow and it doesn't cost, okay? It just makes it just takes a matter of commitment and dedication and you taking the time to put into your travel business, okay? So thank you for taking the time to educate yourself for your success in your travel business. And the more you the more value and expertise that you bring to the table, the more clients will appreciate you and trust you. And that's for sure. Okay? So let's open up the lines for any questions that you guys may have. I appreciate appreciate you guys. Um, hanging in there <laughs> still um, but this is really great info and if you guys apply it you'll definitely um, where is my wall I can't find my wall guys one second can't find my meeting wall so that I can open the lines and my nose is super stuffy at this point now <laughs> So again, let me open the lines as soon as this wall appears. Oh, it's moving rather slow. I wonder what's going on here. Okay, here we go. It's coming in, guys. It's coming in. Okay. Any questions, guys? You have to unmute your line and then you'll be able to ask me any questions. Everyone have their cameras off. No one wants me to see them. <laughs> okay. So if you guys don't have any questions, I thank you guys very much for joining this week. I hope that this this training was informative for you, and I hope that you guys take the time to apply what you've learned to your travel business, because like I said before, I'm only sharing it with you so that you can become more successful in your travel business. So uh, I thank you guys for joining this evening, and I this training will be um, uploaded tomorrow to YouTube and you once you subscribe to my channel you'll be able to view it okay so I thank you guys for joining again
I don't see anyone in the chat, so I don't see anyone in the chat, and I don't see anyone in Q&A, so I will resign for the evening. Thank you guys for joining. Have a wonderful evening.